Uh, I've got the surround, uh, um, experimental X around, uh, wired back up. It's only taken a few days to do that. So it's very fine wires on our Phoenix connectors and uh, a very tricky combination of, uh, take the first signal from the surrounds and then I've got to wire it into continuity so it matches the uh, the output lead um they're going to the uh dolby sa10s to the uh Dolby behringer 304 amplifiers even though i've uh, got to do a bit of equalizing on re simple simplistic eq basically just to lower the levels down so the mid range is mid, mid uh some of the middle up high is not just too high and go all the way down to about probably 250 hertz turn all the filters down they only go down so far um i might put something else in line so i can go a little bit further or maybe think about i don't know changing the amplifiers to but can't get any more crown cts amplifiers that are cheap um <laughs> those are not really the brilliant amplifiers i've got one to still got to repair um got a component simple component to repair i've got to strip it all down um got to figure a way to get this sa10 back up and running uh which would take the outputs from the um surround and then come down into the input and then the output left to right come back up go on to channel five and six on the RCA phono, and then uh, the other outputs uh, for rear back surround, or EX or what, uh, come up and then go on to channels seven and eight. And then um, all I have to do is just press a button on there and go in there, press that, press that, and press that, just to activate. You know, if I want, if I want EX playing with mission to mars even though i think pl2x is better and probably i just just use the dds neural x up mixer uh mate or dts neural matrix decoder um because that gives a kind of similarity to a pl2x whereas dolby dsu doesn't and that adds in an extra bit of bloody crosstalk to the backs around what which is coming from the front. What? Because the stupid decodering, I don't know, it's just their way, isn't it? Anyway, I know what to look for, I know what to listen for, so, and feel for. So, um, so, that I've got to do some re 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 simulations before I, you know, get some cable, make sure it goes down from there. Uh, I think it would be from either from here or be from the output here and then down to here and then the output and then once the input is connected uh, connect the Phoenix uh, DB25 connector and then do all the outputs and then back up connect onto the Phoenix RCA phono connectors onto the uh, and that should do that, but at the moment I'm embracing the experimental overhead. Um, I want to figure if I can get the get the middle channels, uh, the dog channels, dog one, dog two, dog three. You know, not like saving prime. Dog one there, dog two there. Um, <clears throat> I'll get those up and running uh, if I can, but I'll have to do a specific wiring. Um, um, very sort of simple uh, actual wiring. Um, bit experimental. I don't know if it'll work. Where I'll take, because that channel there and, and all the others, uh, if I switch to regular if I switch switch to regular mode, which the which the SA10s are on at the moment, they're on regular mode. You know, there's an SA10 there. The other SAs are in the kitchen. Um, I have to turn down the dog. I have to turn off the dog channel, dog 
dog the dog channel, so I have to turn them, turn them off. Otherwise, um, if I have anything that's got split surround, stereo surround, anything that's left channel, this side, will be coming out on these channels there. Uh, or it might be the right channel. I can't remember which 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 of the the pin wiring. Um, so I'll probably do a wiring where I will take uh, left and right plus signal, and then put wire them together, uh, and just do that. Just test it on one chat. Just on one at first, and just see if there's any. DB drop or if there's any sort of unusual crosstalk or whatever just to make sure that it works um, basically it'd be kind of making a phantom signal I think of um, left and right because it's I'm just trying to remember that queasy sort of thing that way you, if you have a, the I think it was simple basic wiring on an amplifier where we got plus and a minus plus you know, and you just undo some of the wires and you just wind them together and it creates a kind of, you know, stereo matrix surroundy kind of effect. But it has it has problems with when some sound gets steered hard left or hard right, it kind of leaks out into the uh, into the into the signal, whereas ProLogic is a different sort of encode decode it's a different process where it minimizes that sort of crosstalk sort of thing um so i'll try that if it works then yeah so be it i'll, I'll um that'd be pretty good um and that i don't know i don't know it'll probably work similar-ish to um I'll probably the layout will probably then be, be similar to how it was at the Odeon um, screen number one, where it was one, two, three, four, five, six overhead surrounds. So you got one over that side, one o and one in the middle, and one over that side, and then a bit similar to the layout that I got on my ceiling. Um, and I'll probably try that, see if I can make that work. Um, be very complicated so i have to do some diagrams before i start you know doing it because it's exhausting bloody exhausting work to do just simple wiring but it's exhausting but if it doesn't work and it's like you got you gotta rewire it all back to the way you know but it should it should work theoretically um So I'll probably also wire the, um, uh, I'll do a little bit more of a wiring. Then take us out to 100 kilometers distance, adjusting parallel course. I 
is there? Maybe try to figure. Um, maybe. Maybe come. Maybe put a second DCX in here, uh, and do do a replugging. Do a replugging on the um, connectors. Um, got to see. Um, it's tricky sort of things. Um, So uh, I know this is doing the, you know, so I've got additional outputs that I'm not using here. And I figured, pff, well, maybe maybe I can um, take a few of those outputs. Um, I don't know where to locate. There's a little sub there I could fit somewhere in the room. Not there. Probably put it elsewhere. Um, actually, because I just want that out of the way because I'm sick of I just want to change the look of the room. I still got all the bundles of bloody cable down there. It's always got to connect to something, but I've got to have the audio mixer there. I've got to have that equipment there. So um, unless I find find something like I can like a little kind of what's it something to stand on, so that I can you know, um, and then not get my cat attracted to it. Where I jump on it and it'll go arse over to it. Um, <laughs> Uh, otherwise, I just wouldn't mind getting that out of the way. But um, yeah, I've got that little sub there. I've got another one out in the hallway. I've got another little sub. Um, I can augment some of the the, the the lows from the surrounds and probably get it down down a little bit lower. With just maybe just or not just down lower, but just a little bit more output on at the frequency uh, on the output. Um, but I was thinking of fitting it to a ceiling, but no, uh, not that. It's too too deep. And these the overheads there, they're, they're a bit shallow. Um, there's nothing s small, slim profile. Thought of maybe a JBL SB SB. Can't remember what it is. SB one or SB SB two. I know I've got SB. I think. Those JBLs at the back there, I think they're SB2s. Uh, there's another one at the back there, it's an SB5. Um, that's passive, but it could be also wired up, and so it could be running with an active DS, DS, DSP crossovering. Not that it'd be really necessary because the filtering on it is, is good enough, so just a passive uh, sort of thing, really. That'd be just as good as, with, as long as it's got an EQ on it. Um, where well, it might need be a need adjust, but no, uh, an SB SB one, I think it is an SB one. I think an SB one would be about the same depth, roughly from here up to there. So I don't, I don't think it's that deep. It's a bit shallower than the uh, SB five, which is over there. SB five. Had one of these back in the 1990s. I thought I'd get another one again. <laughs> and surprisingly, uh, it was in good condition. Um, um, yeah, but the thing is, the frequency response, how low, how, how low would it go down onto the uh, SB1? Um, Ideally, uh, the subs usually additional subs get fitted over to the side walls. Um, could fit a, a sub in here, but have to be some sort of a shallow profile sort of thing. An SB, maybe an SB SB one will work. I don't think an SB one though would fit between here, so the ports would be firing downward um don't think that'll work yeah I'm looking at a spec on an SB1 SP1 uh nah, it's not going to be doable I'll have to go 
Well, I'll go with what I've got on hand. So I'll probably um, connect that up. Probably see if I can get it located at the back of the behind the room. Or, or maybe, maybe I'll just leave it there and just get the other one. But I can't really put it over there. Can't really put it there. And it wouldn't be really matched with that one. Uh, and the other thing is that they need the plate power amplifier. Uh, I was just doing why well, I just augment it go through the uh, SB, uh, the TCB behind the screen and the uh, back of the room. Um, and just take some of the outputs here and then connect them uh, in a way so I can connect them onto because the S the TCB subs are on on here. TCB subs are on here. Uh, so I'll have to do maybe a, a Y lead XLR Y lead connecting. Um, out from here over to here on one of the channels and that's on one but that would only be mono then uh, but if I put it on another one probably do stereo but it's not really purpose really it's you only know it's a pressure change a shift in the pressure the change of the you ain't gonna know it's like 20 hertz is over there and 20 hertz is over there it just ain't gonna work that way maybe on maybe notice it different on headphones but one that comes once it comes out into a room okay um the sound um the sound just well 20 hertz over there will just get spread you know you just won't be able to distinguish it if it's over there or over there just until you go up to a certain frequency certain frequencies going through sine wave tones and then you start and then notice yeah it's coming from there i can hear it you know or i can hear it there or i know it, that tone is over there but it also sounds like it's a little bit over this way as well <laughs> it, that's just the way it, it's just the way it works um so it's very difficult to distinguish. Um, you, all you notice is just the pressure change. Um, maybe if it were outdoors, it would probably be a little bit better. Uh, especially when it's indoors, because it's going to compress and change the frequencies. Whereas outdoors, yesterday, listening to a PA system downtown, uh, which is a, a, a bar uh, along the beachfront. And just... Two sort of PA speakers uh, fitted up near where the bar is. I think they're probably about 10 or 12 inch drivers. And they had a good bass because it was in an open, it was out in the open. And then I noticed someone walking down the pro, along the promenade and they had one of those little JBL that you hold in your hand, bass thing, you know. I was thought we were getting one of those things a year, a few years ago, but. Ah, oh, surprisingly, it didn't have a very good bass output uh, because of the size of the drivers, obviously, um, versus something that where I was looking at and the enclosure size is different. Um, and, you know, these little things are probably restricted, limited to probably, I don't know, maybe 100 hertz or something. They probably maybe hear a... 80 or 50, 60 or 50 out of it if it was close by or something nearby you know but mm, yeah um and also car hi-fis oh god they're loaded because they're just like you know the systems inside a vehicle so some of the sounds going to get cha changed and altered versus <coughs> get something that's got the same drivers and all that different uh, and or, or just take the base sub you know thing out of the vehicle mount it on top of the vehicle or wherever and it's going to sound different to how it is inside a vehicle because it's just getting you know could you detect stereo 20 hertz over this way or that way in a car no i don't think you can you'd only notice a pressure change